Welcome to day two of Conchell International Film Festival 2022. And this is the first panel of our festival. And the panel that we're gonna, I'm interested in introducing you to right now is the music video, current relevancy and impending future panel, moderated by Diara Uncle P. Chiazzo. All right, let me tell you a little bit about Diara. Diara is an entertainment consultant with a degree in music entertainment management. He has over 30 years experience working in all aspects of entertainment and music industry. Now I'm gonna introduce you to the amazing panelists he's gonna be chatting with. And I'm telling you, they're amazing panelists. David Billow Stewart, not only is he an independent filmmaker and author, but in 2021, David launched the Trill Vision Entertainment app, iOS and Android, not just Android, not just iOS, both, to create a collaborative community to support indie creators with distribution, creative feedback, and branding. A little bit more about David. Nice. Last year, Trill Vision featured a series of CSIFF interviews. Now, last year was our first year, and I can't imagine a better way for an inaugural film festival to start. This man is not only on this panel, he's also a CSIFF award jurist, and he, his company, HHP Media, is one of our media partners. Yay! Our next panelist, I, I don't mean to like rush through it, but I'm gonna rush through it because I know you don't wanna hear me talking, okay? Our next panelist on my <laughs> list, maybe not on the wall that you're looking at, but on the list that I created, all right, is Wally Fall. He is CSIFF 2021 Best Cinematography Award winner, and he's also a member of our jury committee. And he is also the director of Conchal International Film Festival 2022 Official Selection Music Video, Yomen en Ula. With, and you got to see that music video if you haven't seen it already. Go see it. Now, Wally is a filmmaker of Senegalese and Martinican descent, and he grew up in Martinique. In 2016, this man, along with a number of fellow filmmakers, founded Cinema One, a film collective dedicated to creating new spaces. Now you're hearing this theme here, the importance of dedication, new spaces to screen films mostly overlooked from the Caribbean, Africa, and other African diasporic spaces. Since 2017, 2017, he's been back in Guadeloupe. He's not in France, he's not anywhere else. He's in Guadeloupe, in the Caribbean, where he lives and works. In 2020, he directed Fouillet Z Etoiles, and that is the film that won Best Cinematography last year. Thank you, Wally, for being here. And I'm talking a lot. I'm going to talk faster. Jarrell Forbes, writer and director of Conchal International Film Festival 2022 official selection of Better Tomorrow, a music video that you have to see, is a creative arts specialist with over two decades of experience. She has been music director, songwriter, vocalist, and radio TV, radio TV presenter, and now... She manages productions for live events, radio, television, and film with her own media company. Synthetic 22. I know I mispronounced it. I know I did. Forgive me. Jarrell, <laughs> correct me. Correct me. Say, tell me how to say it. It's it's Stenic 22. Stenic 22. She is Trinidadian. She's of Trinidadian Tobago heritage. Yeah. Angelina Villapiano, writer, director of Contel International Film Festival 2022 official selection, Loco! Also known as <laughs> Miss Angelina, is a Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican artist that has an entertainment career spanning film, television, new media, and that's why she's here, music. <laughs> she directed and produced the, web, the music web series Globial, that was featured on the television program American Latino and streamed in partnership with John Leguizamo's NGL Media. She directed, wrote, and produced the comedy web series Pandemic and Chill that was nominated for three awards in the official Latino Film Festival, including New Best Media. 
This this is the group that you're going to be listening to. I'm out. I'm gone. I am no longer here. Bye bye. Welcome everyone. How y'all doing? Good. Great. We, we great, ready great. to talk. We ready to talk music videos? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's get into this discussion. Um first of all, with all you esteemed media film directors video what makes a great video feel free to jump in yes the music video okay i mean we're talking music videos right i've always loved for me the music videos that tell a story i think it's there's a different ways you can make music videos and you know there's a lot of different ways you can go about it but for me, the ones that I love are using the music to also cinematically show some type of story. And also me personally, I love good choreography. I need some good dancing <laughs> in there. That's right, me. Right, right, right. Definitely the choreography aspects let you know somebody just didn't pull up with a camera and say, okay, do something. Right? Yeah. Right. Hey, anyone else care to uh, chime in on that? What makes a good music video? I, I have some thoughts in terms of um, got to be a good song. Like the song, it has to kind of like move me. Um, it could be a ballad, it could be something high tempo. Um, so it's just like the music for the song is really good. Um, and it's something that a good video, I find something new about the artist. Like they take me into hmm. their world, they show me something that I'm like, oh, okay, another side of them. Um, they allow through those visual images for me to connect more with them. Because um, sometimes I'm like, ah, not really feeling the song. It's okay, but then the way they do it and the creativity, I think, is, creativity is a big part of a uh, good music video as well. It will, um, it just kind of draws me, and I love seeing another side of an artist uh, through a music video. Great, great. Anybody else? I do like the storytelling as well, um, but I think I'm bored now of straight storytelling and I love a layered story. So, you know, the music is telling one story and the visuals tell another story, but they still carry the same messaging and layering like that and then connecting the relationship between the sound and, you know, how the edits match. Um, and I think that's just the musician in me because I'm a musician first. So that relationship between um, the rhythm of what we see and the rhythm of what we hear, when they connect in just the right way. And then there's like these um, unisons and storytelling. Ah, oh, that's music video goal for me. <laughs> right. Well, can you share what, what are some examples of the video you just described? Can you give us some? Mm. So I can actually give you um, a little trick an editor and I do, and I learned it from him. So sometimes there are videos that um, tell this beautiful story, but then when you layer it with another song, it actually works really well. And it's a fun little game that a friend and I do. Um, there was this one video. <laughs> So there was this one video, um, it was like this big cast, and I really don't remember the video right now, because I think it was like the trailer, or one of those um, homemade videos that people did, and they took scenes from different things and, and stitched it together. And so it's this crazy car scene that goes on for about two, two, three minutes, maybe about two minutes. And we matched it to a soca artist named Voice in Trinidad and Tobago. And he has a kind of groovy soca song. And when we layered it, it matched exact from the lyrics ah. to what that scene was doing. And it was crazy because they're two completely different genres, two completely different worlds. Too. And so I've been enjoying doing things like that now where I'm creating. <laughs> and it's really just for fun, huh? Um, Mix That's and matching uh, layers like that. They're not connected at all, but it's it's very exciting when you you layer like that. So I can't say I, I can't call a specific video right now okay. that's doing it, but I will admit to uh, my guilty game. <laughs> that that is a amazing concept. I bet it's a lot of fun too. Yeah, because you have to pay attention to the songs and then right. just your bank of music right. videos or um, clips from films or whatever, and then like stick the pieces together. It's really fun. 
Wow, that's amazing. Were they around the same tempo and for it to be able to match up right? They have to be, yes, they have to be uh, close in BPMs for it to match. Okay. And then again, okay. um, the rhythm of the edits, because you know, some people don't edit to the, the, the BPM. So they have to be close enough. Um, and where the bars and the phrases are, so where a verse might end and a climax in the instrumentals might take place. So you really have to deep dive into the song and the visuals and really know it to be, oh, 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 if you take this one and this one, it will line up. It will line up. <laughs> and it right, just becomes this right. Man, that's some awesome creativity going on there. <laughs> to the rest of the panel, what are some of your favorite videos? Um, I want to, just wanted to add something about the... Um... What makes I think everyone said, I mean, summarized what, um, what a good music video is. Uh, what I wanted to add is I think a good music video is a, is a video that makes you want to hear the song more, one more time or it, it gets you hooked to it in a way. Um, I think it works, you know, it works when it does that. If, if when you see the video, you just want to keep watching only the video and not really minding about the, the song that much, I, th I think you miss, you miss, you probably miss something. Um, I mean, that's my personal view, view to it. Uh, and one, one, uh, because I think I, my personal inclination is, is, um, uh, is going towards story, storytelling, uh, too, uh, when it comes to music video, uh, I love concept music videos where you have choreography or, you know, or, or stuff that has no storyline in it, but it has to match the music. It has to match the lyrics or anything in the, in the vibe of the, of the tune um uh and i think that's that's how it goes i rarely do music videos where where there is n no story at all i cannot work like that I, I i really don't it doesn't you know it doesn't work my, my brain doesn't work like that so uh uh it's a bit more difficult to me um one video i really enjoyed recently was a, a video made for an, a Ghanaian artist called Manifest, um, and the track is Mine, Minewa, something like that. And I I heard about that video because I knew the cinematographer who is from South Africa. He's called Muteo Moeng. He's a really great, great, great cinematographer. Um, and he did that track for that guy. I don't know. I don't think there is a story. There is hardly a story in it, but I think it really matches the, the music. Okay, okay, great. Ad Angelina, what's one of your favorites right now, or, or what inspired you to get into all this? I visual wise, say like for I, I'm not maybe not like right now, but my what immediately jumps to my mind when I think of my favorite music videos is Missy Elliott. I'm a huge Missy Elliott fan. I love her choreography. I love that she's always kind of weird with it. Like she's doing some random stuff that you're like, what is even going on right now? And yet it's so fire that you're like, I love this, you know? As, um, because I love when artists aren't afraid to push boundaries and do stuff that is a little weird. I think that's what art is for, you know? Um, her videos definitely make me want to go play that song in my car over and over again. When I hear yes. her music, the video plays in my head. Like when I uh, hear the song, I see her in the big garbage bag, like jumping okay. around. You know what I right, mean? Right. And so I feel like that's a beautiful example of like a job well done. Like when I hear your song and the visual of the video pops in my head immediately, like you have impacted me with your art. Right. You know? Definitely. I, I agree with that. Um, man, I, I love me some Missy. She uh, pushed the boundaries <laughs> on on visual. And uh, it, it, it's just like you said, it, the replay value is amazing on on, on her vid, vids. Mr. David Velo Stewart, what about you? Um, Some of my uh, favorite uh, music videos, I have to go with like uh, huh, Public Enemies. Uh, fight the power uh, that the, this I think Spike direct, directed that that video and it's just like all the people that are just like in the streets and just it's just so dynamic it just makes you just want to you know get up and, and move and just the the whole like rebellious speech uh, nature of it all and another one um, 
that has that same type of a rebellious nature. It smells like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. That video, mm. shout out to Angus Wall who uh, edited that video. Um, like it, it, it's just the end of the whole rock hair band. Like when people saw that video and grunge, and it just like ended a pretty much almost ended a genre of music. That is one of the most powerful videos I think. Wow, um, I've ever seen in, in my life. But smells like Teen Spirit, fight the power, any those videos that just like have this rebellious nature to the music. It always gets me going wow wow that's amazing uh anybody else want to want to go into that i what i really want to know is what what visual what video really impacted um you and and motivated you to get into this space can i add some notes from the chat because people are like piping into this hot conversation i hope you don't mind yara please do um while we follow, I happen to type No Me Wo by M Manifest. I think that was in response to, can you type that in? Then Mayela said, Dave Myers and Missy Elliott are a great team. I really love T-Man's yeah. vid- music video. She works with different directors, but there's always such a great cinematography and energy. Agreed. Thank you so much, Mayela. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Thanks. And everybody watching, please feel free to join in on the conversation. We will definitely get to your questions, concerns, and uh, excitement about what we're talking about. Um, back to impact. What 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 clicked that light switch off? What, what said to you, I want to do this? I, again, think of what, when I was young watching music videos because... I at least come from the era where they still played music videos on MTV. So I would come home from school and put on MTV and watch music videos. That's what I did pretty much every day. So I loved music videos from a young age. And it's still probably my favorite form of storytelling. I've moved now into web series and films and other things, but I just, music videos have a special place in my heart. Um, Probably yes, because I am also coming from a music background, but kind of in line with Missy Elliott. I'm giving you, you know, my own background here. Salt and Peppa. I would love Salt and Peppa's music videos coming up. Just the female empowerment was just made me feel like, yeah. And they, again, the fire outfits, the fire choreography, and just this attitude of like, we are queens. Like, you know, it really impacted me (laughs) as a little girl or a younger woman, you know, being like, I want to do stuff like this. They're killing it right now. You know, it really, that whole vibe inspired me a lot. Uh, Anyone else? I like when I get to see um, parts of Caribbean history and full characters and those elements just very, very subtly and not like a caricature, um, but incorporated into the story or into the messaging or the visuals um, in just this beautiful kind of way. Um, So like Jadena does it a lot, you know, trying Uh. to add those South African elements in there. Um, You have like younger groups like Oshun who is starting to incorporate those things too. So like their recent one, uh, 100K, you know, the, the, layering and the parallel that's what it was of you know selling drugs but instead it's like selling spirits and good energies and that kind of okay. thing uh, which connects back to the orishas and and that the teaching of that history um done in the most casual way in the same way that you would in- ingest like social media content i love to see that because it's so subtle but it's so powerful to the future generations Right. I agree with that. I agree with that. Where do you think anybody else want to cap in on that? What what impacted you and, and made you say, I, I want to do music videos? Can I can I say thriller? Um, I, I, didn't, I wasn't able to grow up with uh, with cable in the in the house. So I so I miss most of MTV as a as a kid. But there was there was a show called Friday Night Videos. That would come on every mm-hmm. Friday night, like at eleven o'clock. We had to stay up really late, and I'll never forget, like staying up really late to see the thriller video. 
and to be blown away of like, wait, I didn't know you could make a video that long and tell a story like that. And so the thriller video always will, will stick in my mind as like an impactful and just the, the waiting and anticipation, not for a TV show or not for a, a new movie, but to anticipate a music video. It just it just blew me away. Yeah. It's to the it. point where you forget it's a music video. <laughs> and you right. think it's like the short right. story. <laughs> Right. Well, y'all remember when they premiered the black or white video? It was like yes. a huge event. We yes. all were yes. like sitting in front yes. of the television waiting yes. for this thing to come on. Yes. <laughs> yes, it, definitely. You went you went on the news actually. They were talking about it on the news to say, Oh, watch out, it's gonna come out tomorrow or whatever. And uh, yeah. Uh, I think what what impacted me is a contrast there was for, uh, between what we used to have back then at home. When I say at home, it's Martin and Guadeloupe, the French Caribbean. We had all these uh, music videos where it was really uh, people singing in front of a, of a background. That's that's what it was. Right, right, right. At the time. And I was like, music. I could see at the same time music videos coming from the US or from from other places where people wasn't afraid to 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 try things and to experiment and to uh, to to you know to 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 do stuff uh, with with all the fantasy they could have uh, or they could bring to the to the to the music uh, and i remember i mean um, in the same kind of, of uh, craziness as, as Missy Elliott, there was there were videos by um, Buster Rhymes at the time, where it was yes. really, really, really <laughs> yes. the guy was you know it was they were somewhere else you know, and yeah. I really enjoyed that energy and I was like we have the same kind of energy why why don't we see the same kind of energy in the music we we want to you know. Uh, portray in a video. Why? Why? Why do we have to stand still in front of a of a beach background? It doesn't make any sense yeah. to me, you know. Uh, so I was like, oh, I, I think we don't need to be uh, a genius to do to do better than that, you know. So right. let let me try. Let me try. We need to bring something else to to. I'm I'm not saying I was the first. I'm saying that I was part of the generation where we wanted to try stuff, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. We didn't want to, you know keep watching the same kind of stuff we we, we we thought we had more to 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 give to people you know right right and that's why you're an innovator on this panel today definitely having that type of vision i feel can i jump in can i yeah, can i just sure. add to that sure i feel the same way about when uh you have to do patriotic things um for visuals and a, a lot of the work that i do is patriotism and you know teaching um about who we are as trinbegonians um but then every time you have to do anything that's patriotic is a cliche um tourism -y, shots of the beach and traditional foods and that kind of thing and like i've been looking at this since i'm a child it doesn't feel as warm as you think it does please stop doing it <laughs> Right, but yeah, I, right. I totally agree. I totally agree. I feel that way about it. So, right. <laughs> like, stop right. already. Yeah, I There's get so it. Much more. There's so much more than beach, than whites and beaches and whatever, you know. Yeah. And, you know, so much more than that. Right, right. Well, we've talked about the MTV era, the having to stay up to 11 o'clock at night to watch visuals. We've came a long way from that. Does MTV even show videos anymore? <laughs> No. What what's the current climate for music videos in your got in your opinions? I'll jump in because I know my answer right off the bat. I was super inspired by I Am King by Beyonce, where she did mm. that like what was yeah. it like an hour long like music video, but it was like obviously several songs woven together into this like musical masterpiece that was like abstract but still telling a story, but also amazing fashion and dancing. And it just had everything. And I was like, wow, this is really the future of what we can do. And I really love this idea of expanding the genre out and having it be like a moving 
you know, it's like a music video opera or something. I don't know. No, that's a good. Yeah, I'm here for it. I love that. And I hope we see more and more of that in different genres as well that feel empowered to do similar things and artists. I know Kanye West also did a similar thing before mm -hmm. with that was kind of a, a long 30 minute long visual, you know, whatever accompaniment to his music. But I am King really for me was like, wow, this is incredible. I loved it. Before anybody else jumps in, let me ask this question. Do we feel like those type of visuals are for mega fan base having artists? I I don't. Um, recently, I saw the video um, by Milan uh, Rhodes, uh, indie artist, and it was it, he put two videos together. It was called The Charm and The Return. And um, in that video, it is, yeah, about 13, 14 minutes long. Um, and I felt like it, it, it told a really, really, really complete story. But it's two songs put together. I felt, I felt like that creativity, and I, creativity was, is amazing. I, I agree with uh, Angelina about the whole uh, Beyonce. Like, I, I really feel like the direction is that direction, is that more indie artists will uh, be able to start making longer form um, uh, music videos um but yeah to answer your question i i think that uh yes um i think indie artists are, are able to accomplish it too great 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 um i'm excited for that that type of uh format to start making a bigger push into the music industry um anyone else what 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 are your thoughts on the climate what are you seeing in your countries and homes I think there is a, I mean, MTV and all the music channels have created a, a trend where where sometimes people wanted to have a music, video, a music video that could be played on these kind of channels. So, so some people got trapped into, I want the same kind, the same music video I saw yesterday yeah. um, on MTV or on MCM or whatever. Um, I work. I, I'm, I met a few of those artists, and I was like, first of all, you don't have the same budget, but that's not about only the budget. Are you trying <laughs> to say? Are you trying to say the same thing? You know, um, and if it's just about making the same, you know, a, another one just like the one you saw yesterday, I'm not in because if we're not ready to to invent something new. There's no point in me being here with you. you there, there are plenty of people that can do the job, that kind of job. So I think it's about what ambition you have in terms of visuals. Um, what type of work are you, are you ready to, to, to do? And what space you, you give to the uh, director, video director you work with as, as an artist? Because some artists, Want to control want to control so much of it that there is no space for you to really express yourself so sometimes it can be just down to that too um finding your 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 space and and feeling that the artist you're working with or you're working for is is um respecting that space allowing you to express yourself within that space and being ready to collaborate with you fully and to trust you not everyone is ready to do that, I think. Right. And the more right. people you have, uh, yeah. music executives, uh, managers, and all these kind of people around the artists, it makes it really, really hard to, to you know, to, to, uh, to get your vision across and, and manage to, to have it the way you have it in your mind. You know, it's really hard. Right, right, right. Anybody yeah. else? What do we feel I would say like? though, Wally, I like, I, I would say though, um, at, at Wally's um, statement, um, I do like though that artists are now starting to see their sound and get into that place of visualizing um, the stories that they want to tell. And especially when you work with artists who can communicate that to the director um, they may not necessarily know how, but they can articulate, you know, the feelings that they want to come out 
to have come across with, with certain visuals. I appreciate that the future of music videos when it comes to the position of the artist, that they are now starting to expand on just the sound and start step into the visuals of the products that they're creating. Um, and it's easier too when you have an artist who can really speak to you and tell you, this is the mood I want at the end. And I want, you know, this is the kind of things I'm seeing and this is what I felt. And this is having artists who can articulate that and not necessarily the teams, the management teams come in and tell you, this is what we're trying to do because of the market marketing strategies around it, you know, working alongside the artists and having artists being able to, to share what they want for their art and trusting you, as Wally says, um, to support that visual because of, you know, your style they like for whatever reason. I really appreciate the evolution of the industry going in, in that direction. I think, I think it's a, it's a, I mean, uh, that being said, I always start from what the artists have in mind when it, when it's me you know working with an artist it's yeah. like what do you have in mind what do you want in your video and and then we we, we start from there you know and we, we we try and stay on the same page all the way through um and as long as it it is i'm as long as i'm um in tune with the artist's vision i'm cool with it you know um, so I think, just like you said, uh, Joel, I think it's really nice when an artist have a vision, has a vision, and and that they can communicate with whoever they're working with. Um, but I was just stressing out the fact that sometimes it's not about having the vision. Some of them just want the same thing they saw the, the day before on 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 TV, and that's completely different to me. You know? Yeah, I agree. I'd love. Can I jump in and read yeah. a comment yeah. from the audience? Mayla says, visual albums also mean that artists must also create records with a story behind it. If you're just about releasing one song, get one hit to have, have streams, it's hard to build a solid story. Indeed. Thank, thank you for sharing that, Mayla. Indeed. Indeed. I think our panel was supposed to be up at 140, and I'm very disappointed at that, but I want to make sure we get to something. Um, I read somewhere the other day that TikTok has started eating a little bit of YouTube's lunch, and I know YouTube has been somewhere where a majority of folks find their music videos. How do we take back all this viewership from the popularity of short form videos on TikTok. How do we combat this? Or do you even feel like it's a problem or do you have a master plan of how we can help, you know, using TikTok to help what it is that you guys are doing? I have a very personal story about this that I'm going to share because I went viral on TikTok for a music video that I made and it changed okay. a lot of things for me. So I live in Puerto Rico. Bad Bunny is a very big deal in, in music, in Latin music, and especially in Puerto Rico. Okay. Right. So I got tickets to go see his latest concert. And I was kind of still new to TikTok, but having some fun with it. And I made a joke music video by sampling one of his songs. And I changed the lyrics to, I'm going to see Bad Bunny tonight. And I just kept repeating that to the sample. Oh, I'm going to wow. see Bad Bunny tonight. I'm going. And I made a whole music video of me getting hyped throughout my day because I was going to see Bad Bunny that night. The video goes viral. Okay. More than I expected. I was like, oh, wow, people really love this. Now it becomes on TikTok an audio that other people can use. I just checked it this morning. It's up to like 4,200 other people have also used this audio to make their own music videos to the point where another reggaeton phenomenon, the biggest female reggaeton artist of all time, her name is Evie Queen, used my audio to make her video when she went to go perform with Bad Bunny. Wow. So the whole thing has like, all of a sudden now I'm like on social media chatting with Evie Queen, who's like one of my like idols growing up. You know what I mean? Because she's like, I love your video. And I'm like, ¿Qué está pasando? like I'm freaking out, you know? <laughs> so all that. Where are the air horns? Ha 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 ha. 
This is a big moment here. Wow. And that all of this happened within the span of like a few, you know, less than a month. You know, this thing blew up to the point where a reggaeton superstar and I are chatting on social media because of this little music video I made on TikTok, you know? So I actually think TikTok is the future, whether we like it or not. And I think we can play a role in molding how we want to use the platform for our art. We are in control as the content creators. You can make up to three minutes on TikTok, which is the length of a lot of songs and music videos. And I actually think more people will see it if you put it on TikTok than will if you put it on YouTube in a lot of cases. The, the viewership on TikTok mm -hmm. is out of control. I get way more yeah. views on TikTok than I do on YouTube right now. Yeah. So I'm almost thinking to myself now, how can I use this platform and this medium to use it the way I want to use it for my musical content instead of fighting it? I'm more like, how do we right. innovate and use right. the platform to benefit us? That's right. because of my crazy experience. Right. Wow. You, you just dropped a mega bomb <laughs> on us right there. <laughs> Thank, thank. I I can't wait to share your story with other people because I, I deal with a lot of artists all the time and I've seen this question pop up to the point where I'm being told I don't need a music video. I just need my phone and TikTok and I can accomplish the same thing. Who else can chime in on that if we do have time? I think I'm the only one on TikTok. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Me and all the no, no, no. I, no, no, no. I absolutely agree with everything that she said. I'm, I'm, I'm excited too because TikTok is gonna have a lot of young directors and producers coming in just now that we're gonna underestimate. So there's a lot of high quality stuff being put on TikTok. Even people yeah, it's shoot. amazing. They shoot with their regular gear and then they just edit oh, it to yeah. be portrait instead of landscape. And it's very high quality stuff that's getting put on that platform now. And I think it's not going to stop anytime soon, personally. No, it's not. I agree. I it's agree. not. No. The, the youth dictate where things are going and that's where they are, you know, so it's going to have a great run. Nice. But I just want to say... Don't feel intimidated by that or like, oh, no, TikTok's taking everything from us. Like we can manipulate the platform as content creators too right. to put out what we want to put out. I'm not a, I'm not a Gen Z. I'm 42 years old. OK, and I got a music video viral on TikTok. So it really is for everyone and you can use it how you want to. This is a Excellent beautiful way advice. to end this conversation. I love this. This is like moving to the future not, and owning it. Thank you yes. so much. I'm going to end this conversation with reading the message that's on the chat. I hope you guys don't mind. I hope you don't mind, Diara, because this panel was amazing. And and I'm going to take the mic for a moment and, and read Mayela's note. Also, one of our challenges is to develop this Caribbean visual identity so we can be identified aside from other cultural cultures' visual style. Mm. If you look at K-pop, they copied a so-called urban visual style for their music videos, and they embraced it. So now when people see K-pop music video, they expect some type of visual. If you take Jamaica, for example, dance hall queens were part of the visual identity for reggae dance hall. But now that they're, that they're gone, how do dance hall music videos stand out nowadays? And I think... It's something every music genre in the Caribbean needs to think about. Boom! 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 Drop that mic. More air horns. Okay. Okay. So this was magnificent. We can go on forever. You can go over to the CSIFF lounge and keep on chatting. But I want to thank Diara for like this spicy conversation. Jarrell. David, Wally, and Angelina for being an amazing panel. Angelina, that little note about TikTok, love it. Now, our next panel is at 2.30. Romance in Caribbean cinema, how love 
can redefine social change because this whole film festival's theme is social change. And it's going to be led by CSIFF 2022 jurists and the founder of Caru Karama Podcast, Mayela Cancel. All right now, everybody. I want to see you there. Thank you so very much. And peace.